So this is the deal. This is an up and down instead of a this way. And no highly edited video today because um, I'm going to be showing a bunch of my stories that I did a week ago when I went on an airplane. Remember in my video about anxiety and agoraphobia, controlling it? And I said, I was terrified of flying. Guess what I did? I got on a plane. Three planes a week ago. Uh, if you can remember in my video about anxiety and agoraphobia, I said I was terrified. I swear that the minute I got on a plane, that would be the, my last day on this earth. But look what happened. I'm still here. So at the age of 51, I got on a plane for the first time. And um, I'm going to show the my stories because it shows, I talk about the emotions that I was having. If, if you have anxiety, then you know the feeling of being absolutely terrified of something. I'm not proud that it's taken me since I'm 51, but the fact that I did it made me, that's what made me proud because... If I went through life avoiding this fear, I, when I, at my deathbed, I would be so disappointed in myself. The only person that's ever going to help you get over your fears is yourself. Remember that what goes on in here is directly... We we dis we disconnect sometimes that our brain is different from the rest of our body, so the things that that swirl around in our brain, you know, all the fears and everything, control um, chemicals and make us feel uncomfortable and scared. But um, it's not going to kill us. It's just going to make us uncomfortable. And, and learning to recognize what is what exactly it is making you uncomfortable. Like the feeling of, oh my God, my chest. I'm feeling the scaredness in my chest. We As soon as I took off, my chest started getting tight. And I was thinking, I'm going to die in this plane of a heart attack before it cr crashes. But I just kept... Even if you don't, even if you don't believe the words that you're saying in your head, like, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be fine, as your chest is going, ur, ur, ur. the more you say these words, the more it's going to work. The main reason why I'm making this video is because the whole time I, I did my stories, I, I put it up. And I was doing my stories as I went to and from. I went to Mon LAX to Montana and then Montana to Salt Lake and then Salt Lake to back to LAX. I had to take two planes on the way back. Ooh. But I'm but I show you talk about the emotions that I'm having at the time and kinda how I work through it. Lily. Mama's gonna go on a trip. Mama's going on an adventure this morning. You gonna miss me? I miss you. I miss you. Yeah. Well, it's time to get up and start this adventure. <laughs> Good morning. Bats. Well, there's no backing out now. So I am... I got up a little bit earlier so I can do some stretches and try to relax because I went to bed super anxious. And I gotta get on this flight. I can't back out. 
I downloaded some fear of flying things from YouTube in case I need them and some inspirational songs by my Nicholas Cave. Lily, you can't go with me. The dogs are freaking out because I'm leaving. I'm sorry they saw us packing. Freddie wants to go so bad, but he can't go. Well, I'm dressed in a comfy outfit for the plane. And we're headed to the airport. Fred, sit down. Okay, we just arrived. And I'm walking to check in my bags. Matthew's got my bags. Um, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Because I'm going to fly other places. Shut up. Just do it. All right, I'm all waiting for the plane now. Would you like to invite now. all remaining passengers, flight number 2540, going to Seattle. Not going to Seattle, going to Montana, I'm going to Missoula. There's my airplane right there. The butt of the airplane. We're going, look at all these airplanes. We're going on a small one like this. It's like, it's like a Mini Cooper. I'll just think of it like that, like I'm going in a Mini Cooper plane. Just about to board soon and I'm getting that super nervous feeling in my chest. <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Can I just take that till the way to Montana? Alright, here I go. I'm getting on a airplane. This is going to be my first real airplane ride in 51 years of my life. Right? Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, watch your step. <laughs> I just watched my step. Ready? Oh, God, there was another one. Well, I'm on now. We're ready to go soon. And I'm getting... I talked to the stewardess and told her I'm nervous, so... Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be leaving the gate soon. Please stow any carry-on items. Use the space under your seat in front of you for smaller items. And the space yes, for all, yes, place, all larger yes, bags yes, in the overhead. Yes. This is when I had the worst physical feeling and it felt like I literally was going to pass out. I felt felt like the blood was draining from head to toe. Um, I'm assuming it was an anxiety attack, a quick one, but I looked around to make sure that no one else was having a reaction like I was having. And I distracted myself with these stories and music on my phone. The feeling subsided within a couple of minutes and I was able to enjoy the view. And then this happened. I got these. Ta-da! I got my wings. Ooh, we're having some turbulence right now. Don't like that. But... Okay, I'm still alive and I'm up in the sky. It's rocking back and forth. Which I don't like so much, but the f 
flight attendant came back and talked to me and said it was normal. So, so, so good so far. The audio gets a little bad to hear here, so I'm just going to explain what's happening. So, um, I was listening to my favorite song by Nick Cave, Jubilee Street, and as I was looking out on the wing, I was just filled with immense pride of myself from being up there, even though I was going through these terrifying emotions up and down, and I was imagining myself dancing on the wing with the wind just ridiculously blowing every part of my body. It, it was a cool image that I put in my mind to try to conquer the fear. At this point, the ride was pretty smooth, but I was still having the anxiety in my chest off and on, but I was able to look out the window and enjoy what I was seeing on the ground and what I was experiencing and that I got my wings. That is something I'm proud of. <laughs> Look at the little circle. I do tend to have bouts of claustrophobia too, so having a seat by the window helped more than you would think it would. So right now it's incredibly turbulent and you can see it's very bumpy, it's like going over bumps on a road. And the steward has explained to me that when we go over the mountains there's more like air pockets and stuff. Oh my god! There's no clouds down there. Look at the clouds. Oh, they're so cool. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Oh my God. 30 minutes left. And it is really choppy over the mountains here. But I'm doing okay. You can too. Look at that big giant cloud. Look at God, they're so cute. Ladies and gentlemen, the backside of clouds. Here in about 20 minutes. It's a beautiful day in Missoula this afternoon, uh, showing about calm winds, a few clouds in the air, temperature is 75 degrees. Ooh, nice. It's been a pleasure having you on board with us on behalf of the two of us from up front. Three of our lovely flight tenants and Delta Connection, thank you for joining us. You guys have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. And enjoy your flight tenants. Please prepare the cabin for all. Oh, this is super bumpy. As we prepare for landing, please make sure your seat belt is fastened. Okay, so it's super, super bumpy. As we prepare for landing, please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. Your seat, back, and tray table are either upright and locked position. Nobody seems to think it's a big deal. Ensure larger devices such as laptops It is kind of scary. Once you're on the ground, feel free to use your mobile devices to taxi to the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Check around your seat for any remaining cups, glasses, or any other items you would like to discard. Is this normal? Passing to the flight attendant. Apparently, this is normal. I don't like this part. So I made it! Woo! And I'm here with my sister! Yay! Yay! And my niece Violet. Hi, baby! <laughs> Yay! We're gonna go see my parents. The last 15 minutes, Natalie? Yeah. Was 
ridiculous. The turbulence was like this. <laughs> it was. <laughs> no, wasn't it, Natalie? It no, it, it no, it was for real. Yeah. But we lived, and it, and I'm so proud of myself. I'm gonna go have a shot of tequila now. Let's go to the bar. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm on the plane for the second time, ready to go home. Pretty super nervous, but I gotta do this again. I don't have a choice. My mom isn't getting any better. Oh good, they have the office on the plane. Now I'll be able to calm down. It's really hard to hear me here but I started to get nervous again because this was the flight out and going over the mountains it's very turbulent so I was getting really nervous and I had that feeling like I was gonna pass out again <clears throat> but um, I was trying to keep it together watching the office <laughs> and um, nobody else was freaking out or nervous, so I that kind of made me feel a little bit better, and I calmed myself down again. But going over the mountains, that is not fun. That is very bumpy. The turbulence lasted lasted for quite a while here on this trip, even though it was only. I think it was only about an hour to Salt Lake, the first flight. But um, I just kept telling myself, I'm going to be safe. You're going to be safe. This is a safe, safe way to travel. And the pilot wants to get there safely. Everybody wants to land safely. This is normal. This is like going over bumps on a road. Just keep telling yourself over and over again until you believe it. Because look at these incredible views. This is something you're not going to see just sitting on the ground. You've got to be in the air to appreciate. And these cookies. This landing in Salt Lake City seemed so powerful and like it felt like the plane was never going to stop and we were going to go crashing to the end of the rail, the runway. But um, it was interesting seeing all the little, little flap things flap-a-doing in the wind and stuff or whatever they do to them because it makes it more real to see a huge um, engine like that or machine working. Survived the first flight. Now we have to get a connecting flight. Ay ay ay. In Salt Lake City, ready to go to LAX. This has been a whirlwind of emails, let me tell you. My emotions have gone from excitement, terror, bewilderment, amazement, sheer, I don't know. But, to learn to master them. I want to take a hold of the fear 
and not let it overcome me. I just have to keep doing this. connecting flight was so smooth and this airplane I love this airplane I am so happy I chose Delta as my first uh, airplane ride because I was super happy with it but it uh, Salt Lake to LAX smooth and I watched one of my favorite shows to help me stay relaxed and I actually fell asleep for a little bit. I get to go home and see my doggies. Book the flight, go on YouTube, find videos from pilots and from um, stewardesses talking about what it's like to be on a flight. There are people that record their whole flight on the on a plane. They'll they'll say like, I bought a ticket for a, a plane on Delta. And the plane was an Embraer or something like that. So I typed that in YouTube and someone had put in the whole flight, you know, from the start to the beginning. And it made me feel more comfortable to see what was going to happen to me on the plane, you know, like the process. So that's a huge help. We've got so many helpful resources right now, right at your fingertips on YouTube that can help you get through fears. So I highly suggest doing stuff like looking on YouTube and finding other people that have conquered this. It's not really a conquer, it's a getting through and it's controlling how you're feeling in the moment. Um, I was terrified. I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified when I first got on. There was a point where I felt like I was gonna pass out, literally but I didn't and I'm here 
and I have a flight booked already to Germany in March to visit my sister and then we're going to France oh yeah we're gonna have a nice actual vacation something about I want to see Versailles and it's gonna happen because I already booked the flight everything is ready to go I just have to this flight's gonna be 11 hours and the flight I was just on was literally like only three hours so I'm hoping to take another flight that's a little bit longer between now and March so I can you know get used to we'll see what it's like to be on a plane for a little bit longer but um you can do it i did it and i terrified terrified i used to okay as a, like i talked in my other video think third i'm almost 30 years old and i could not come out of my house to get my mail and i overcome it because I didn't want to live like that anymore. I want to fly to other places. I want to see other places because things are going so fast. It's ridiculous. I'm not the type of person that can just breathe and get through something. So I have to literally talk to other people or do stuff on my phone to distract me and you know now they have some some flights have the little video thing and you can watch videos or play games and that helps to distract you but i highly suggest doing the youtube stuff look up people that have flown fear of flying um there's techniques if you need a technique people have lots of different techniques on how they got through it my technique i I personally did not want to take any kind of medication. This is my own personal choice because I know how powerful our brains are and our bodies are. And I personally wanted to overcome this from the power of my mind. That it's, I have no issue with people using medication if you need it because some people aren't you know ready to take that leap because that makes it extra scary when you feel all the emotions that are going through i felt them all but i kind of wanted to do that because i want to be able to come back down when i'm spiraling up and out of control with my feelings i want to be able to know that I'm strong enough that I can grab my hand, my own hand and say, you're going to be okay. You know, I, d I had a friend with me and the flight, the landing into my Missoula was pretty scary because the turbulence was, oh God, off the charts for me. Well, the things didn't come down, but it was pretty scary. I hope that this video will help somebody because when you realize how short life is, you're a ticking time bomb, literally. Your, your health, your age, you know. Um, the thing that triggered me to really get this ball going, because I talked about it forever, but I just never did it, was that my mom is not well and she's not getting better and I need to be able to get on a plane whenever I need to go see her my my you know I want to see my parents because they live in Montana and we're in LA so um and I want to see the world I want to see what I've been missing being afraid because as a wise man told me one of my friends you have zero control. Regardless of how much control you think you have, you have zero control. Right now, something a meteor can fall through the ceiling and kill me as I'm doing this. Or Mr. Meow could bite me in the leg and then I trip and go right through the glass door right here. 
that just happens to have great lighting. That's why I'm doing it here. So you never know. Fear is a feeling. It's not a reality. And I have to tell myself this all the time too. And I'm going to keep telling myself this. Every time I get on a plane. And when I go to Europe for 11 hours in a plane. You know, I wasn't, I'm claustrophobic, but I wasn't as bad as I thought I would be. I didn't feel claustrophobic because I was near a window too. And actually looking out and seeing the beauty. Wow. I was just floored. Absolutely floored. I know this video is longish, but things that need to be said and images that need to be shown. So share with me, share with me your fears and how you plan on conquering them, controlling them. You will never get over it. These are things that you, you, they'll, they'll be stored way back here, way back here like in an old closet, you know, or an attic. And sometimes they might creep out, but most of the time, once you get the confidence, confidence, confidence in yourself and that you have the power, I have the power to push it back. You know, I'm rambling and sometimes it doesn't make sense. I'm hoping some of this is making sense to you because, you know, I wish you success. And even if it's not successful the first time, even if you, you know, flip out on the plane, it's okay because the next time you'll, you'll learn from the physical feelings you're feeling that this is not reality. I'm flipping out because... I'm telling myself to flip out. You know what I mean? Like, look on the wing and say, what? this machine is a maze. Look at the maze machine I'm in. That, and look at all the people in the airport that are taking these machines. I did that. You be consciously aware of all the people that are around you. All these people aren't here just to sit and watch you get on a plane. They're here to get on planes back and forth. That helps too. I know I don't do a lot of videos on here anymore because life is crazy. So many things coming at us all the time. But I do stories on Instagram almost every day. So you can follow me, follow my stories on Instagram or on my uh, The Art of Pocket Fooled Posies or The Art of Queenie Black on Facebook and on my Queenie Black Facebook too. It's just more, I feel more natural. Like all these videos that I did in here, they take a lot of time and a lot of editing and stuff. This just seems more me, you know. But um, follow me on Instagram. Ooh. And you could see a lot. Follow me on Instagram and you'll get to see a lot of Mr. Meow, my cat, and Lily Bell, Pinkie Pie, Poo Poo Pants.